professional. Okay, so yeah, we're going to go over what we can and what we can't put into our dog's food. So uh, based on last week's video, um, we've had quite a few requests on how can I make my own veggies? What do I need to put in it? And what um, what can dogs have and, and why? So I consulted Nettie on this. So Nettie's my mum and she's given me a huge list of things that are a yes for dogs. So you don't need to worry about veggies and fruit for cats. Cats are obligate carnivores. They don't need fruit and veg. So if you see fruit and veg in their food, it might be for certain vitamins and minerals, but you do not need to feed a cat or a ferret any vegetables or fruit. It's not necessary. So what everyone tells you that's not necessary. So we'll stick to the uh, dog side of things. So we came across this topic because Nature's Menu have stopped doing the chunks of the veg that we really like to uh, promote. We still have these ones. They've got lots of peas in. <clears throat> and peas are part of the, the, the legume family and they inhibit various processes within the dog's digestion so they don't absorb things like zinc and magnesium quite as well. So if we can avoid peas, then we do. So mum's absolute ideal, this is what she does, as she said, it's really easy. Don't even need to buy the cubes veg. You can, I have not been to the supermarket, by the way. All this stuff was in my fridge this morning. I just grabbed it. So it's not, it's not a case of going out and getting specialist items. You can think about it when you're doing your shopping, but I didn't have any of this in my mind. I just taken what I've got from the fridge today. So um, a nice bag of leafy um, leafy greens. This has got watercress, spinach and rocket in it. So mum's top tip with this is put it in the freezer. Oh, it's one day update. Put it in the freezer and then let it freeze. And once it's completely frozen, scrunch it in the fruit. Once it's in the back, open the bag, scrunch it all up, and then it'll turn into tiny little pieces. And you can just put a few scoops of that on their food. And leafy green veggies are better. So that's what that's her top tip. So you take this, you put it in the freezer. Once it's frozen, and what I've done at home, I've got another bag in the freezer and once it's frozen i'll scrunch it up and i'll put a little video on youtube or on um, instagram and then you can see um how it ends up and how easy that is to do so that's her top tip if you haven't got anything else in the house easy peasy just use whatever greens you've got in the fridge so rocket baby leaf salads it's things that are fast growing fast growing salads so this type of thing this is watercress so that's nice Spinach and rocket. Spinach is really good. I haven't got a list of what's in everything. I'm just going to rattle few, rattle through a few pro, few things that you can add um, in a bit of sections. So we've got things like um, so we've got rocket, watercress, spinach, and um, we've got pea greens. So when you uh, sometimes you see it on a fancy salad, pea greens you can add those, or you can uh, if you're growing your own. I mean, mine have gone over now, but peas at home. The greens, the little twirly bits with the leaves on, they're okay. Um, carrot tops. So when, you, <laughs> when you've got your carrots in the ground, that's the hard veg, root veg, the fluffy bits off the top of the carrots and the fluffy, the, um, and beetroot as well. Mum, those matches, like, those are really, really good. So they've got all the good things within that root veg, but none of the sugars that are in the root veg. So, yeah. Carrot tops, you put them in, you could put them in the freezer and treat them in the same way, scrunch them up. Um, so beetroot tops as well. And sometimes some of these salads have little baby beetroot bits in as well. Um, you can use um, some herbs, so you can put parsley in, um, and you can use things like chard. So those are things you could potentially grow at home as well. Or if you've got a bag like this and some of them have gone a bit 
like that on the back, a bit dark green and a bit slimy, and you wouldn't eat it. Dogs aren't going to mind. You'll be fine with that. And so you've got kale when it's young. So freshly picked young kale. Sometimes you get that in these bags as well. You've got things like um, bok choy, um, Chinese vegetables that you can grow. And then you can also gather stuff from the wild as well. So you can use um, dandelions, dandelion flowers. So leaves and flowers, they're okay. Wash them before you use them. Um, cleavers, I think some people call it sticky willy um, or they call it uh, goose grass. So those bits with those little balls, on those that's really good, really high in vitamin C. Um, so those are a good thing to add. You've got stinging nettle tips. I mean, if you fancy it. Um, you can use the seeds as well, stinging nettle seeds. Um, we've got, um, so in young growth with spring spring growth on berries, um, you can use the berry shoot tips. So blackberries, the, the small pieces, the fresh growth where it's brighter green, those bits are fine. So you can gather those, and that's more of a herb actually, gather those, wash them, then you can add that in as well. Um so I'm reading it all off because I can't remember all of this. So we've got, um, so that's like uh, fresh leafy greens that you can use. Always recommend that you would just wash them first, pat them dry. Um, and all of those will actually go in the freezer. And you can treat them like you do this. You put this in the freezer, uh, let it freeze down and then scrunch it all up. And all of those will be the same. And it'll be broken up enough for them to um, enjoy. So, oh, thank you, Duncan. Yes, the frozen, yes, in the freezer. Um, no, I hadn't even thought of it either. And then mum goes, well, I've been doing it for years. So um, the harder veg that you get, you can feed other things as well, but you will need to put it through um, some sort of processing. So you need to be able to cut it up small or it needs to be grated or it needs to be blixed. Ideally, blix it. That's a much better way of doing it so the pieces are really tiny because the dogs then can absorb the goodness from it. Because really, you don't have to include vegetables in their diet. It's just a good way of adding extra vitamins and minerals. And this video is just about what you can use, okay? So you need to blix them, put them through a blender so it's a lot smaller. And that goes for all larger, harder vegetables, even leafy vegetables like kale when it's older. That needs to go through a blender. Cabbages, you can do that with. You can do that with broccoli. You can do it with cauliflower. Um, and you can also do it with squash. So any squashes. So you can use pumpkins and you can use butternut squash with the pumpkins. Keep the seeds in because they've got something in them that really help with worming. So a natural wormer. So keep the seeds in the pumpkins and the squash because that's actually OK for the dogs. You can keep that on. So just peel them. I would peel them because that skin's really quite hard. And then there's probably no, that'll just pass on through. So use the pumpkin flesh and the seeds. Um, so you can put that into a blender. And then all these things that we put through it, you can save for later because you can freeze it again. And then it's not going to go off. It's in the freezer. It'll be fine. Um, you would blend up courgettes. You can use asparagus. And then you can move on to things like the root vegetables, ones that we store over the winter. Um, carrots are a great example yes they do struggle to di digest the vegetables if you give your dog a carrot quite often it ends up coming out like a carrot and that is down to the fact that they um they don't break down oh Emma. cellulose thank you um they don't break down cellulose as we don't break down cellulose they have amylase within their digestion tract but amylase which helps to break things down um, is only found further down in the animal because in, in a dog because that's where their digestion stops simply because mummy dog daddy dog goes off in the wild they would bring food back for their pups and they don't want to start it digesting when it's in a bolus they bring that back up to start feeding the pups so we don't want that digesting so that's why there's no amylase in their saliva like there is with cows so root vegetables are quite high in carbohydrates. They're quite high in sugars. Um, so we would use them less. Um, carrots are quite high in abundance, but you would move towards the leafier greens rather than those root vegetables. But you can use you can use beetroot. You can use carrot. You can use swede, sweet potatoes, parsnips, ginger, turmeric, celeriac, radish. All those can be used. Um, 
And the other thing that is a good thing to add, very beneficial, but only use the ones that you can eat yourself, um, mushrooms. So mushrooms, uh, there's all sorts of things going on at the moment on how good mushrooms are for us and for our pets. Well, mushrooms are something that you should definitely think about including in. When you blix it up, and I'll do it later, whatever you put with it, mushrooms will make it turn into a sludgy, mucky colour, but they are good for them. Um, fruits and berries, again, high in sugars, so they need to be fed in moderation. Um, you don't want to be feeding too many of them in the same um, fruit blend that you make up. But um, this time of year, absolutely perfect. You can go out and pick free blackberries from the local area. You put a few of those in. There's extra vitamins in there that they will absorb and enjoy if you blend it through the um, processor. Um, so anything with high sugar. So bananas, that's OK. But if you were putting banana in like I will in a minute, only half a banana. They don't need all of it. But if you're making some up, you're going to spread it out across the whole of the batch that you make. Um, so all soft berries are fine. So you can do blackberries, you can do raspberries, blueberries, strawberries. They can all be eaten. And other things like the hanging fruit. So you've got apples and pears, um, cucumbers, avocados. So avocados are not actually poisonous. It's the stones that are the problem. So you would peel the avocado, you could take the stone away, and then you can put that in the food. It's the stones that are the problem. You don't want them to eat them. You don't want them to be them stuck anywhere. And I think they've got things in the stones that's not so good for them if they were to chew them. So um, and that goes for other stone fruit as well. So things with stones in or pits in, always remove them first before you put it through the blender. Always remove the stones in your fruits, like the peaches, nectarines and plums. Remove those and then use the flesh of that fruit. And you can use me melons. Melons are fine. Peel them. Um, don't put the skin in because um, but they're also really high in sugar. So just bear that in mind when you're doing it. There is a group of fruit and vegetables, um, fruit that is the nightshade family, which you'd be well aware of. Um, tomatoes um, and potatoes, um, aubergines, peppers. They're all part of the nightshade family. Um, and the that's generally um, quite a poisonous plant, especially the green part of the actual plant. So if you don't want to include those, just avoid them completely. Other than that, if you want to put tomatoes in, um, the flesh is fine, but take away any green stems or any pips. Um, and then we were talking about the beans earlier. So legumes, these are high in um, phytates. So that's what I was talking about. They can block or they can decrease decrease the absorption of key vitamins and minerals like iron, zinc, magnesium and calcium. So you can put them in the food, but you might find that their meal, aren't, they're not digesting it as well because it's being blocked by the peas. So that's why we're moving, you know, the, the vegetables have got the peas in. Let's try not to feed them quite as much. Um, you can feed, um, so what else? With, so what shouldn't you give? So there's loads of things that you can give. There's definitely things you need to avoid. You should never feed grapes um, in any form. So dried grapes like raisins and sultanas, or really fresh grapes. Grapes are, um, they don't actually know what causes the, the toxic substance within the grapes that make the dogs poorly, but they can make them really poor. So you definitely need to avoid them um that because dogs are not able to process you know when you hear people talking about wines and tannins and the um flavonoids and monosaccharides in, in the wines that's all the things that dogs can't absorb so we avoid grapes because they don't really know why but they're not good for them so we avoid them and onions that's a no-no as well so although you can feed um a little bit of garlic for um helping with fleas and things and people do do that Onions, onion family, um, again, we'd avoid that. Onions contain a toxic um, principle, which is known, I'm reading this, I don't, n propyl disulfide, and that breaks down the red blood cells, and it can cause anemia, so that's why onions are a no. 
and then nuts. So you might see that people say you can feed nuts, but avoid macadamia nuts. Macadamia nuts quite often have got a mould on them that you can't see, but that's on them. They don't tend to affect us, but that could affect the dog because some moulds could be toxic to your pet. So that's why just generally nuts, macadamias for sure you would avoid. Um, and the other thing that's really seasonable, seasonal at the moment is corn on the cob. Now, they've got a really hard um, shell on each of the kernels and you could scrape them off the um, the actual cob, the, the corn part, but um, so you can feed that bit, but just don't let your dog have the leftover husk because it's completely indigestible for the dogs. They're usually too big, so it might get stuck in their guts. And generally the only way out for that would be veterinary intervention. So we would avoid that. And if you think your dog has eaten one of those, you should let your vet know as soon as possible so they can intervene and hopefully help. Sometimes they might pass through, but it's probably not worth the risk because they're so undigestible, they'll get stuck. So um, really good to feed seasonal variety um, and then let the dogs have a change over time so their bodies can detox, for example. So we dogs don't absolutely need any vegetables. They get by on an absolute 100% meat um, diet, absolutely fine. But they are, there's a debate, isn't there? Are they omnivores? Are they carnivores? It goes on. But basically, they've got sharp, pointy teeth that rip and tear the flesh. They've got flat teeth at the back, which chomp and break down things. Their jaws don't move like ours. We can do this. A cow chewing the cud circles its jaw and grinds the food. They can't do that. Their jaws literally just go up and down like this. And they grab and tear and then they chomp it back. So that's what these big teeth for. Um, and that's, that's basically the principle of, of, of the raw diet. Feeding them a nice big juicy bone means that they can eat the flesh and it'll help to floss their front teeth and the bigger pieces will scrape on the back teeth and take off any plaque and tartar. So they are absolutely 100% easily adapted to eating a fully raw diet by adding extra vitamins and minerals by including some seasonal vegetables that you've got in your fridge like I've got here is absolutely fine because they won't hurt but you definitely don't need to give those to cats or ferrets. So they say that dogs might be facultative carnivores or they might be omnivores. However, that goes on, but that's how their teeth work. So we know that they are well equipped for eating meat, which is why we do it. That's why we make it. Um, and also the other thing with dogs is they've got quite a high concentration of stomach acid. So they can break down um, animal proteins easily um, and they break down the bones and it turns to a jelly and then they absorb it as it goes through the small intestine. So there's loads of um, loads of reasons why feeding a raw diet is really beneficial for your dogs because they are absolutely meant to do that. Um, we get amazing results and we see amazing results every day when you come in with your pets to our stores. Um, we see the pictures on, online that you share with us and that's amazing. So I've got some bits here that I'm going to put into a blender to give you an idea of what the consistency is. I'm not going to lie, it'll be a bit noisy and it's just what I've got at home. And um, I'll just show you quickly what we can do. I'll do that in a minute. And then um, the other thing I'm going to include in it is some of this, which is the skin and coat. This is a fermented seaweed, which is really good added into their diet excellent for them there's loads of good reason we can go over that on another day but everyone that's used it have definitely noticed a difference with this so we've got this online we've got this in our stores and no one seems to mind having it they all seem to quite like it as well i've got a few bits here that we've got so we've still got the vegetables that you can get from us but they're quite high in peas they've got 30 percent of peas in there um and then the rest of them this is actually the fruit and vegetable nuggets so those ones are the better ones but the other ones have got a, um they've got their different make or their different brand once they're all gone they're gone they're stopping making these and then really what would you rather you know this is the meat and the reason why we feed meat and prefer that over something like a carbohydrate biscuit 
look this is so nothing that we make is actually complete in in a thing like this is this is just carbs there's there very little meat content in these in these um kibble biscuit bits so the dogs don't really benefit from it it just ends up with really big poos um stinky loads of reasons their bodies are trying really hard to digest it which is why sometimes they have health problems on that so having a nice chunk of raw meat and some blended vegetables that you've lovingly prepared at home, then that's a win for you and for your dog, to be honest. And then treats all nice and natural. Beef long cubes, they're back. Rabbit ears, your hairy rabbit ears, another nice natural digestive aid because they're hairy. And then you've got natural oils from things like the fish. So by feeding a variety over time, you can combine things like the fish you can combine dried foods and the raw foods will give you a good balance and that's what we'll talk about another day carcasses these are our chicken carcasses and these are back as well guys so people that have been waiting for the riblets the smaller ones you see that's quite a nice size for a smaller dog so things like that you combine it with some bone free mixes and then we'll make up a veg and then you can see how that goes so i've got this which we've had forever i'll make pancakes in it as well it's a ninja i don't even think make these anymore where am i going to put it so you can see it well that's the ninja it'll come up here won't it and it's got this it's got two attachments on it you're supposed to make smoothies with it generally but it's great for cutting up this sort of thing because it tends to blend it right down and make a um like a smoothie in the morning as well yeah, pancakes, even pancakes. Are good. So um, we, you sometimes might need to add a bit of water to what you make. Um, we've got, so and there might well be a, a blog on the website about why we don't make our own veg anymore, um, which you can look up. We can link that in here for you as well. So this is how um, I'm going to make with uh, some vegetables or blend for my pet, my dog, um, out of stuff that I've already got in my fridge. So um, half a banana. So only half a banana because it's very high in sugar. Um, we've got a small, this is um, about a third of an apple. Dogs like apples. You don't need to peel it. Just don't put the pips in. You can chop it up. I just chop it up a little bit because it helps the machine. And then um, I've got some cucumber. So I've got half a cucumber. Um if I put it all in once, it's probably not going to work. So I'm going to have to blend it as I go. And I'll put the other bit this in last. So, mind your ears. So that's why sometimes you might have to put a bit of water in it. We never used to, though. When we made our veg, we never put any water in it. So that smells quite nice. It's a bit like a smoothie at the moment, but it's about to get a bit grim for us. Cucumbers. There's a half a cucumber. These are really good. There's loads of good reasons why cucumbers are good. Not very sugary either. Low fat. Bit of good stuff. So that's cucumbers in there. Blend that one up. Knock it around a bit. veg that this will produce will probably fill an ice cube tray and you only need to put a couple of nuggets in that in your dog food for, um in the week uh, every meal so that will last quite a long time i'm gonna attempt to put it in here but i think it's gonna overflow and it will overfill that so i'm gonna put some of this in yeah some of these are a bit gooey and you know it's fine you can give it to them it's not mold as long as you're not putting mold in there you're fine I'll put some of those in a bit of rocket um, the spinach and watercress, they're all a yes. And then see what happens in a minute, we'll put the mushrooms in, it'll go a horrible colour. Which is probably why we didn't, <laughs> didn't used to use mushrooms quite as much, because of the colour it would produce it. So, before we used to do like, um, different mixes, so this would probably be one of the um, greener mixes with the, the veggies in, that are green, like the ca used to have cabbage in. It's quite a good 
good consistency, so you probably won't need to add water to this mix. You'll be fine. So it's kind of looking like that now. Still smells okay. And we're going to put some mushrooms in now. Um, and, yeah, they're just going to... I think, I'm assuming, I'm predicting they're going to change the colour of this to a lovely brown sludge. Bear with me. And that's all I'm just going to put in it. Now I'm going to make a horrendous mess. Attempt to get it in here. Yep, whatever, we're already. Spoon might be good. One of those silicone spatulas. That would be good to use with this. And then. Stick it in here, obviously if you've got your food for that day, put a bit on their food. And then that's it. Fill that up, put it in the freezer and you're done. And then that, you know, a couple of cubes of meal, absolutely fine. And so what I was really after is this consistency. I want it to be tiny. I want it to be small. I want people to it to be, if you spread it around your fingers, it just breaks up. So, looks delightful. Tastes lovely. But the dogs will like it. <laughs> it's fine, actually. It doesn't taste horrible at all. It's actually raw mushroomy. So, just to give you an idea, or right, you can take it away and eat it if you like. Give you an idea of what you can use. Um, yeah, so you can, yeah, Ness, we can do, um, we're not going to do a red one today. Uh, I've just used what I've got in the fridge um, and you could add water if you wanted to um, if it's too thick but it's actually worked out all right I thought that one was going to be a bit too thick and had to add a little bit of water but I didn't need to it was absolutely fine and when we used to make the veg ourselves we never added any water at all so Adam's enjoying that it's probably really good for you so yeah it'd be good for your pets as well so Hopefully that's been um, interesting and informative today. Um, I'm going to write the list of the vegetables that are okay into a blog so you can actually refer to it for ease of use rather than have to watch this back again. Um, and yeah, that's it. So we've got our shawls open at Nurturing by Nature. We're open. Oh, I would. You're right. I was going to put Neptune's Yard in it. You won't want to eat it now. <laughs> so the Neptune's Yard is a seaweed and it's fermented thank you for the reminder luke and this is the seaweed and i put that in it as well so you can either put that on as a sprinkle on the dog's food or you could put it into that mix and it's already done so i'll do that now you probably won't even see it so for this amount that's going over these i'll probably put one of those spoonfuls in or if you want to be a bit more accurate put it in as you go and i'll put this over at the um upton shop for tomorrow so if anyone wants to come and have a look at it i'll leave it there for whoever's in tomorrow in the team they can show you what it looks like what it smells like and see if your dog wants to try it let's whiz that back up in here it will be slightly more grainy in consistency now. <laughs> You can see the seaweed in there, like little speckles of seaweed. It's actually made it a bit thicker as well. There's a powder anyway. You can't, you can see it with your eyes. You can't necessarily see it on the screen. So we'd add that in here. When that freezes, it'll probably go a lovely brown colour. So yeah, easy peasy. Make your own. Excellent. Right. Uh, Sammy's in tomorrow, so she can uh, show you what I've made and bring it out for you if you want to have a look at it. And she'll be at the um, the Upton store. So talking of we've got our stores open. Um, we are based in Dorset, down in the south of the country. And um, in next week's episode, well, feedback from everyone. 
Let me know what you want to know about, what, what we can do with you, what we can do for you. This has been created out of a request. Um, what can I make for what fruit and veg or what can I use for my dog? So this product that I've got here, I've just made up. That's been made because somebody asked me to do a demo. How would I make the veg? Well, this is how I would make it. And it's a really easy way of doing it. And mum's tip is a genius tip. And I'll share that with you again. You get your bag from the supermarket or you can wash and dry the leafy green vegetables that I went over before. You put this in the freezer and then the freezer obviously freezes it. Once you take it out and it's frozen, you literally, it's quite good fun. It feels nice. You scrunch it up, it's all crunchy. And then you can just put a, a spoonful in the spoonful in the um in the food so someone wants to know with stores our stores are based in dorset um we have got um we, we have our factory which is why i'm opposite now this is our dispatch center with the kitchen uh our factory is in upton in Poole, and that is open tomorrow from 10 to 1 we've got pamp hill store which is attached to pamp hill dairy lovely place to go and get some ice cream for the kids pick up your raw food go to the butchers they that's based in the kingston lacey estate just above wimborne that's open all weekend so saturday and sunday saturday nine till five sunday ten till four and then we've got our christchurch store which is based on barrack road there's parking at that one She's parking in all stores, you're unlucky. But the parking is out the back of the Christchurch store. And um, that is open the same hours as the Pam Pill store at Wimborne. So Christchurch is open um, from um, 10 till, oh no, it's open from 10. So 10, 10 till 5 on Saturday, 10 till 4 on Sunday. And that's, um, we'll put the link for that for you. And then lastly, West Malls. West Malls is our founding store that Nettie started it all off so if you got my email this morning um that's our first store and Westmore's is based in between sort of Ferndown and Ringwood off of the main road that runs between the two where the um garage is where they do the tires and that is open tomorrow only so that's open on Saturday from nine till five so thanks for getting involved and watching and hopefully you'll give it a go with the veggies with your dog. We'll put a blog up and I'll link that in here anyway so you can pick up some of this information because it's rather a lot to go through on what you can and what you can't give and how to make it. So have a nice weekend and take it easy, won't you? Thank you for joining me. End.